Hi, welcome. This is uh, Janik Kiram. I want to give you a quick walkthrough of the recent announcement by Docker, which is their new AI ML stack uh, based on Neo4j, Langchain, and Olama. So at uh, DockerCon, Docker announced uh, their entry into the Gen AI space. So the stack consists of various open source technologies packaged as containers. The idea is to let Docker developers and cloud native developers get onto the Gen AI bandwagon by giving them some kind of tools. So <clears throat> is this innovative? Is this uh, something groundbreaking? Not exactly. My understanding is Docker just assembled a bunch of open source technologies, packaged them as a Docker Compose file, and gave us a chance to run the entire stack with one command. Anyone can pretty much assemble this. Uh, it is based on Olama. Olama is a pretty powerful tool. Uh, it is actually used to run LLMs on macOS. It has native integration with the Metal GPU, provides acceleration, and I've been running this for a while. The best thing is it does all the heavy lifting of quantizing, pruning, and optimizing the models uh, such as Llama 2 and uh, more recently Mistral uh, to run on macOS. So you don't need to do anything to optimize the model to run on your Mac environment, particularly optimize it for the Apple Silicon and the Apple Metal GPU. So this is already containerized. Uh, Olama has pretty good support for Docker. So they have taken that. And to support vector storing and embeddings and perform a semantic search, they partnered with Neo4j. So Neo4j is a graph database and it is currently pushing its AI capabilities, particularly through vector search and semantic search. So again, uh, you can run this today. If you look at their Gen AI strategy, it is all about leveraging the investments in graph database and enabling uh, vector sto storage and uh, semantic search. So this is an obvious choice. Uh, every database vendor is supporting some kind of vector database and uh, semantic search with inbuilt search algorithms. So Neo4j is also one of those recent database vendors to start supporting the uh, vector capabilities. Again, uh, this is natural. Almost every database will support vector storage and uh, semantic search. And then we have the most powerful lang chain that is becoming the de facto for almost uh, for almost developing any production ready applications. Uh, so. Langchain is almost uh, the de facto standard today to build LLM-based applications. So what Docker has done is taking all these technologies and packaging them in uh, Docker Compose. Nothing fancy or nothing groundbreaking. In fact, there are some, uh, some gaps and some holes that need to be plugged to even uh, use this in your environment. So what I want to do is I want to give you a quick walkthrough of running this in your environment. So I have a dual GPU machine. So if you look at my configuration, I have a pretty powerful machine with uh, two GPUs. One is an RTX 4090, the other one is RTX 3090. Uh, and they are configured with uh, CUDA 12.2. So I wanted to run my run the uh, Gen AI stack on my machine on my AI testbed. So the steps are pretty straightforward. You got to clone the repo, which I've already done, and then uh, you have to copy the env.example file to a .env, and this is where you define all your customizations or configurations. The uh, advantage of uh, using the stack is it's pretty easy to point the stack to any LLM of your choice, including some of the commercial models like the OpenAI GPT-4 
or uh, anthropic clot 2 you can decide which llm you want to use by default it comes with llama 2 so all you got to do is copy this and uh, create your own version of .env which i've done here so one of the first things that you got to do is to replace this with llm uh, there is a default endpoint for example if you look at the uh, example env file so let's take a look at that it has a different host name now you got to replace this with llm uh, which is one of the names of the services that uh, embeds the olama container and then you can change the model to a supported uh, olama model i'm trying the mistral one of the recent and uh, touted to be very capable llm and you can use an embedding model of your choice sentence transformer is pretty good so that's the first step customizing the uh, env file and then because i want to run this on gpu i had to do additional configuration so i opened docker compose.yaml and i added these entries so basically i want to run olama on top of my gpus i'm i'm only giving it one gpu which is my rtx 4090 so i gave the count as one capability gpu so this is how you enable docker compose to access the underlying gpu so that's it now once you made these changes you basically uh, use a command docker compose profile linux now this is important because uh, profile linux will actually tell the docker compose environment to download the uh, olama container and uh, download the model this is slightly different from the way you run on mac os in mac os you don't have the gpu capability so there is a, a little bit of a configuration difference between running it on linux versus mac that's the reason why uh, docker gen ai stack has the support for profile so we use uh, docker compose profile linux and uh, this comes up you can actually see this uh, i've already downloaded the model so it's going to be pretty fast so it brings up all the containers that are defined in the docker compose.yaml and ultimately it opens up a streamlit app so let's uh, let's go to the browser again and uh, access the streamlit app so this is the streamlit app now uh, what i didn't like is in the dark mode this is pretty bad you can't even read so you had to go to settings and then uh, force this to be in the light mode and then you can actually see something uh, more visible so uh, i want to i want to try this uh, without rag so rag is uh, retrieval augmented generation so basically the idea is to uh, use the stack overflow data set that is already stored in neo4j so the first query that i want to run is without the rag so you can see it's pretty fast uh, it's running on my local test bed uh, consumer grade uh, gpus based on rtx 4090 and 3090 and for that this is pretty fast uh, and and what i actually like is this is mistral uh, and it comes back with pretty decent uh, and accurate response so it actually tells me how to convert a typical python list into a numpy array uh, so this is without any context or without any semantic search being done on neo4j so now i'm going to enable rag uh, and then run exactly the same query uh, what this actually does is instead of using the llm's native intelligence uh, based on the data set it is trained it now actually uses the context coming from the uh, vector database which is a part of neo4j uh, it's almost same uh in in my experiments i didn't find anything significantly different the only addition when you enable rag is it comes back with stack overflow references but uh the disappointing thing is the links that it actually cites as sources are not accurate uh it actually uses the text correctly but then when you click on this it it takes you to a random stack overflow page now this is about objective c and how to restart a game so uh, don't rely on 
the citations and the links of the sources but this is pretty cool uh, you know in in uh, just a few minutes i was able to run the uh, entire genai stack uh, based on gpu so now if you uh, look at my configuration at this point i'm back on my machine um, and if you look at my gpu uh, yeah so so the first gpu that i have given access to uh, is almost completely consumed uh, 22 gb or 24 gb is gone uh, so <clears throat> that is the quick uh, test now i can switch from mistral to llama that is again pretty straightforward all i got to do is uh, open my .env file and switch from mistral to uh, llama and uh, it it now uses a different model so there is nothing innovative in this it is just that docker has made our lives a bit easy and simple uh, but other than that uh, this is not something very very different or unique or innovative so so let's change this to llama 2 which is the let me make sure i got this site no uh Llama 2, yes. Okay, so now we come back and do a Docker Compose up. And uh, even even my Llama 2 model is already downloaded, so it shouldn't take a long time. It's going to be fast. Uh, but if you're on a slow internet and your bandwidth is limited, then uh, the initial download of the model will take a while. All right, so now we are back. And if you refresh, you have exactly the same uh, front end now powered by Llama 2 instead of Mistral. So you can try the same thing. And now the response is coming from uh, Llama 2 instead of the previous uh, LLM. So uh, again, the responses are pretty accurate uh, for both Llama 2 and uh, Mistral. I am at to try Falcon, which I am going to. But Mistral was much more descriptive. It actually gave a lot, lot more detailed explanation and uh, uh, even the output and so on. But what is disappointing is the RAG implementation. So you can access other applications. For example, uh, this is another application. Uh, again, I got to change the setting to light. So this is uh, basically forcing Stack Overflow data set uh, to become vectorized and get stored in uh, Neo4j so you can access that. And uh, there is an endpoint, an API endpoint for you to integrate. So uh, you can even try that. This is actually annoying, uh, right? So, so this is the uh, PDF bot. I tried this. I don't even want to demo it. The reason being, uh, it is pretty slow. So you can drag and drop a PDF. I, I actually uploaded a two-page, very small PDF, and I wanted to chat with my PDF, but the response was so slow that it didn't even make sense. What I understand is uh, it actually does an on-the-fly, just-in-time lookup. It doesn't really vectorize the entire PDF and, and stores the embeddings in Neo4j. Instead, it actually loads the PDF on the fly and, and does uh, a search, or maybe it vectorizes behind the scenes and then performs a search. But irrespective of what it does, the response has been pretty bad. So I don't even want to touch that. But this is good. Uh, this is a good start. Now, I'm actually planning to take this Docker Compose file and turn that into a Kubernetes uh, artifact like a set of pods, a service, and uh, PVCs, and so on. It shouldn't be very difficult because the Docker Compose file in itself is pretty small, and uh, it is it is straightforward. You can quickly turn this into a set of Docker artifacts. Not very difficult. So that's how uh, you can leverage the Gen AI stack uh, provided by Docker. So I'm at to play with the APIs, but in the next demo, I'll show you how I run uh, my 
cloud native gen ai stack on kubernetes without the docker gen ai stack i use chroma i use a bunch of tools uh, to actually build my gen ai stack on kubernetes that's coming soon uh, stay tuned thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe i am planning to bring you a lot of cutting edge content uh, based on gen ai and where cloud native meets gen ai so stay tuned for that